What's up YouTube? It is your boy JB and we are here tonight with a review for the haves and the have nots. This is season 8 episode 12 and the episode was titled Black Panther. Now you guys, I look a little sweaty just because I just came from outside and it's really, it's still hot and the sun has gone down but it's still hot here in Texas. Did I say the name of the episode? Black Panther. So you guys, um, if you guys are watching this video or any other video on the channel and you guys are not already subscribed to the channel, while we still going out on dates and you know at the end of the dinner i'm stuck with the bill hit that subscribe button you guys hit the notification bell button so you guys are aware of when i drop anything else and share the video so without further ado you guys let's go ahead and jump into this episode review shall we interesting episode but let's talk about it all right you guys so this episode it picks up with jeffrey and madison and much like last week's episode for me I feel like we spent too much time on Jeffrey and Madison. So you guys remember in last week's episode, Tanner told Jeffrey that Justin had HIV, right? And that he should get tested. And that also Justin wanted for Tanner to give Jeffrey this gift. And I'm still trying to figure out like, why is Jeffrey so stupid? So after Tanner left, Madison comes up and Madison asked Jeffrey what's going on. So Jeffrey told him, you know, Tanner said something very upsetting to me. And he's like, so what did he say? And Jeffrey can't really spit out the words HIV. You know, so then, you know, just not Justin, but Matt was like, what is it, Jeffrey? Like, tell me, like, tell me, what is it? So he eventually tells, you know, um, Madison that Tanner told him that Justin had HIV. And Madison is like, because you know jeffrey's like why would he do that he said he's probably trying to rattle you you know give you anxiety which is exactly what he's doing so madison asks, how did he even know which is a good question how did he know so then Je then madison asked jeffrey did justin ever mention it he says no now it's not too far-fetched to think that maybe Justin did have HIV just because of the fact of what we know about Justin that Justin you know was putting the guys in the back of his squad car and having sex with them so it's not too far-fetched because I can't imagine that you know Justin had condoms in his his, his squad car when he was doing that stuff so it's not too far-fetched so I won't say that it was far-fetched but I did agree with Madison how would Tanner know those answers so then, you know, Jeffrey is worried, like, you know, what if I what if I have it and what if I gave it to you? And Madison was like, we use condoms. He's like, but condoms are not 100 percent effective, which that is true. Condoms are not 100 percent effective. But Madison's like, you don't have to worry about it. We use condoms. And then he didn't say, he never said what it was he was on. But I know what he's on. He's on prep. If you guys ever watch the commercials, they, you know, step up, prep up like the commercial. There's a commercial that comes on with the girl who played Lulu on um, Pose. She's in one of those commercials. So he's on prep and he, you know, they use condoms. Now, Madison asked Jeffrey, did he and um, Justin always use condoms? He said, not all the time, which that wasn't smart. Jeffrey, like, come on. You know, the man was having sex with people in the back of his squad, raping people in the back of his squad car. Why would you then go and have unprotected sex with him? Doesn't make a lot of sense. But, you know, Madison tells him, you know, use condoms and I can definitely give you the information about PrEP, you know, and we'll we'll get you tested as well. But Justin is once not Justin, but Madison. Nope. Jeffrey It's too many of them with this triangle. Jeffrey is just still worried that he might have HIV. But, you know, Madison's like, you know, it's not a death sentence like it was 30 years ago. You take your medicine. You live a long, healthy, happy life. But let's move on. All right, guys. So Candace and Benny. Honestly, with the Candace and Benny scenes, they weren't much. The only scene with Benny that was decent was at the end of the episode, which we're going to talk about that. But Candace and Benny are in some dive motel. And when they got into the motel, I was like, wait a minute. This looks like the same motel that Q got killed at. And I don't know why Benny didn't think that my sister's son got killed in a motel with mama. But you took her to this dive motel. So she asked him, like, what happened if somebody steals your, one of your trucks? He says, oh, nobody's going to steal my truck. Benny, you look like you're on the bad side of town. If a crackhead or a homeless person wants something out of your truck, 
they're gonna get in there. But okay, I guess Benny knows everything. So Candace says that she'll find another place to stay. He's like, no, we'll stay here. So then she asked him like, you know, where are you gonna wear on your date with Brianna, Rihanna, I don't know. I can't remember what her name is. It sounds like they saying Brianna, but when I was watching one episode with the closed captioning on, it said Rihanna. Can you guys confirm what is her name? Like is her name Brianna? We just gonna say Brianna Rihanna. That's what we gonna say, Brianna Rihanna at this point. So, Benny once again says he just wants to, you know, he was gonna wear whatever he had on, which, ew, nasty. And then he's talking about once again, he wants to just smash Brianna Rihanna. I'm like, Benny, how old? You know, here's the interesting thing when it comes to this show, because I just, I was thinking about this when I was watching it. The first thing that I was thinking about is, I know that Benny, Candace, Mitch, and Wyatt, I know that they're all supposed to be portraying characters in their 20s, but none of them look like they're in their 20s. Not a one. Even, yeah, so it's supposed to be, actually, is Jeffrey, it's, it's Jeffrey, Candace, Benny, Mitch, and, um, Wyatt. They're all supposed to be playing like they are in their 20s. Y'all look older than me. And I'm in my 30s. I'm about to be 32 in July. But <laughs> just saying, you know, not being shady. Yes, I am. A little bit shady. But, um, yeah. Okay, so I guess I'll give it to Benny. He's in his 20s. We're going to play like he's in his 20s. And he just wants to have sex. He doesn't want to settle down. So, okay, we get it. So then Mitch shows up and he asks them, why are they standing here? And Candace said, that's the same question I asked. But, you know, Benny says he's getting ready to go on this date with Brianna Rihanna. And, you know, Candace and both Mitch try to tell him to go get a suit. But Benny's cheap. He doesn't want to buy a suit. So then, you know, Mitch asks Candace after dinner. She says, yes. And Benny says, no. I'm like, Benny, you're not her keeper. You are not her keeper. You know what? In this episode, there was no, um, Jim. There was no Jim. I was trying to do the David, a David voice. There was no Jim, David, Hannah, or Veronica, or even Catherine. So I guess they're going to come next week. You know, it's really interesting how these last, how many episodes are left, you guys? Like, it's really interesting how these episodes are going. Like, one episode, one week is just focusing on this one particular group of people. And then the next week is another group of people. Wait. No. No, 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 no. It's, oh, okay. So, I'm assuming we're going to, because I just noticed the pattern. Because the first episode, it centered around David, Jim, Hannah, Catherine, and Veronica. And then last week's episode centered around them as well, right? Yeah. Because that was when Hannah and um, Veronica fought each other. Veronica had Madison, had um, Kobe beat up. Jim was trying to get David to butter up um, Hannah. Veronica went to see Catherine. What else happened in that episode? David went to talk to um, Hannah. Catherine called. Did Catherine call? Was that the first episode where Catherine called Hannah? But you guys get what I'm saying. I'm noticing a pattern. So I guess next week's episode is going to center around these same group of people. So I guess what Tyler Perry is doing is two weeks, it'll be one story. It'll stay on one storyline. And then the next two weeks, it'll move to a different storyline. But again, how many episodes are left of this season? I thought it was only eight. I thought someone, I thought I heard that it was eight episodes left of this season. And if that's the case, we've already had four. Well, we've had three. Next week will be four. If you guys know, please leave it in the comment section below and we'll discuss it for sure. Um, so next let's talk about Benny. So Benny went to go get the suit. So the suit that Benny tried on, <clears throat> I will give it to him. The suit looked amazing on him. So he asked the young lady, how much is the suit? She said it was $1,800. And Benny's like, oh, that's too much. You know what? For a suit, absolutely, that's a whole lot of money. $1,800 on a suit, unless it is 
unless it's an imported suit, you know, like an imported suit or a high name designer like, uh, <clears throat> I'm trying to think, you know, Mark Jacobs, is that a designer? You know, if it was just like your, your normal, like the, like the dress, like the suits that you see the celebrities wearing on a red carpet, if it was one of those, I would be like, okay, I get it. But it just looked like a normal suit. But she said $1,800. He said it was too much, which I agree with him. But at the same time, Benny was being cheap. So <clears throat> Benny agrees to get the suit. And then she offers him a discount of 30% off the suit. So Benny says if he doesn't get lucky with this suit on, he wants her number. I'm like, well, Benny, <clears throat> way to disrespect this woman. I was like, way to disrespect her, Benny. Like, way to disrespect her. So if you don't get lucky with Brianna Rihanna on your date, you want this woman's number so you can get lucky with her? Benny, you're looking like a creep, buddy. Now, here's the thing with this woman. She made this whole big ordeal about it only to give him her phone number. I was like, lady, why did you make that big fuss and you still ended up giving him your phone number? Now, Benny did realize that the woman was... Am I getting too upset? Nope, I'm getting too ahead of myself. We're going to pause here and move forward. Okay, you guys, let's move on. So, the more that I look at these notes, this episode was definitely Benny, Candace, Mitch, Jeffrey, Madison, centric. Because that is all that is in my notes is Madison, Benny. Madison, Benny. Madison, Benny. Madison, Candace, Benny. So, Madison... He gives Jeffrey his um, HIV results and, you know, Jeffrey is negative. So then Jeffrey tells him to go take a swab of charred, burnt Justin. <laughs> You're in a hospital, dude. He's in the morgue. If Madison were, and it's not even like he can take a swab. Can you? No, you have to take a blood sample. And then if someone notices that Justin has a prick on him from being, you know, stuck with a needle or if someone caught him, how would, how would Madison explain that? Enlighten us. And Madison tells him he can't do that. But then Madison goes and does something extremely stupid. Madison went and looked up Justin's medical records. I'm like, are you serious? HIPAA. Ever heard of that? You can't give out someone's medical records. You can't even look up someone's medical records for your own personal knowledge. Not unless you are actually work. Well, you know what? He was Justin's nurse at one point. But see, here's the thing about that. You were the nurse when he um when the last time he was in the hospital after the stuff that happened with Veronica, you were his nurse. So you would have known what medication he was on. You know what, Tyler, did you really, did you think about that? I'm, I'm not being funny, but did you remember that Jeff Madison was his nurse? So Madison should know what medic if he, what medication he was on? Because when you go, when you're, um, cause I, I have, I mean, I know, I, I know I have some friends that are nurses. I have a little cousin that's a nurse. You know, I went to school and started a nursing degree, didn't finish it. I'm gonna finish it, you guys. I'm gonna finish that degree at some point. But when it comes to that, you look at a person's chart and you see what's on there. It tells you what they're taking. It tells you what they're allergic to. Like when I go to the hospital, on my chart, it has the they they ask me every time. Actually, at my hospital that um, I, you know, I was a regular patient at when I was a kid, they had it on file what um, medication I was allergic to. I'm allergic to the medicate the drug sulfur. I can't take that. Like I can't take that. And, you know, they know that, like, when they were, because actually, it was a few years ago. Was it when I had the flu? It was either when I had the flu or, no, I just got, I had a, I had a stomach bug. And they were about to give me some medication that had sulfur in it. And they asked me, that, you know, they were like, they asked me, did I have any allergies to medication? And I told them, and they were like, ooh, thank you for telling us because the drug we were about to give you has that in it. I'm like, well, yeah. And I'm like, it's, you know, which I told a girl when I went in for intake, what drug, I put it on the paper what drug I was in, but they still 
I'll somehow overlook that one, but that's neither here nor there. But that's what I was thinking about with Madison. Like, you were his nurse. You should know what drugs he was on. <clears throat> you should know if he's allergic to any medication. Like, if he's, you know, some people are allergic to penicillin. You should have known that instead of looking at his chart. But then when you look at his chart, you know, you're telling Justin, you're telling Jeffrey, well, did he, you know, ask me, did he lie to you? Did he lie to me? No. And then Jeffrey is so stupid. Well, actually, no, he's not stupid in that scene. Because <clears throat> I will give it to Jeffrey. That didn't make any sense. How could Jeffrey, how could Justin lie to him if he never told him? So I was about to say Justin, Jeffrey was stupid, but no, that was Madison that was stupid. <clears throat> Ask me if he lied to you. Did he lie to me? No, he didn't. What does that mean? And I was actually with, like I said, I was with Jeffrey. What does that mean? And then I, get, <clears throat> excuse me, y'all. Then I kept sitting there thinking, like, why did you look up his records? You know what, you guys, we are not going to keep talking about this. But suffice it to say, Justin does not have HIV. So now, Je you know, Jeffrey is worried, wondering why would Tanner say that? And then he tells Madison that he gave Tanner his address. So then we see Benny. Benny still with the suit. He took a picture of his suit and sent it to Mitch. And Mitch likes the suit. Now, Benny is still in his feelings, however, about the price of the suit. So then the sales lady comes out. <clears throat> actually, he took another suit off the rack and he looked at the price tag. The price tag actually said $600. So Benny was like, oh, you tried to upsell me. You know what I was wondering? Was Benny going to have sex with that woman? Oh, God, Benny. Let's move on. All right, you guys. Next, let's talk about Candace. So, you guys, Candace was getting ready to go on a date, go out to dinner with Mitch so when she comes out of the bathroom, Mitch is in her bed, in one of the beds, in just his drawers. And she was like, um, why are you half naked? Like, let's get ready to go eat because I'm hungry. And she told him that those days of them being together, they're over. Do I believe that? Semi. So then he tells her that, you know, he's been worried about her with everything that she's been through. You know, um, losing Q. What else has happened to Candace that he knows about? Oh, and the president stuff. Here's another question that I have. Are what time? <laughs> Is this show still set in 2014? Because I, cause when I listen to Mitch talking, Honestly, I didn't forget about Q, but I, when I thought about Q, I'm like, you know, maybe that was years ago. That was for us. That was years ago when Q got killed. But for them, I think it's very recent that Q got killed. I don't think it's years for them. I think it's a matter of weeks for them. Weeks, days. Lord, we have been on us. We have been on the same, we have been, I think we have been in the same year for the last eight seasons. Ooh. I mean, it's the same with um, the Oval, because we're two seasons into the Oval now, and we're still into the first week of Hunter's presidency. Okay, you guys. Um, where are we at? So then, he, so then um, Mitch started talking in circles. He was confusing me. He was talking about Mama Rose and the Criers. But I guess what he was trying to say to Candace is if Jim talks to Mama Rose them about she and Benny and the protection, they could come after them, but it would have to be with Mama Rose's permission. If you guys understood that, leave it in the comment section because I really, truly didn't. Like I said, he was talking in a circle, so I didn't completely understand it. So then let's move back over to Madison. So Madison is in, whose bed is that? Who's better are they in? Are they in Madison's bed or are they, are they in, in Jeffrey's bed? Either way it goes, they're in bed together. Madison sleep. Jeffrey is just ever so lovingly looking at um, Madison. 
And then Tanner calls him saying that, you know, he was going to bring thing, the things to him, but now he asked him to meet. So I'm assuming that Tanner must have went to David's house and noticed the security guard. So now he wants to meet him in a different location. I'm like, Jeffrey, if you do that, you are the dumbest person on the face of the earth. So then, you know, he asked Tanner, what is it? And Tanner's like, oh, I don't feel comfortable going through it. And, Tanner, and you know, Jeffrey's like, you have my permission to go through it. He says, oh, no, I don't want to pry it. Then Jeffrey's like, well, I don't want it. He was like, so you don't want to accept something from my, my dead brother? Uh, no, because your brother was crazy, and I don't know how far the apple fell from, fell from that tree. So, uh, yeah, no, thank you. I do not want to accept that gift from you. Take it and return it to Cinder. Oh, that's right, your brother's dead, sorry. Yeah, no, I don't want it. I don't need it. Justin was a lunatic. What person goes to a gas station and douses themselves with gasoline, come into a restaurant and set themselves on fire. <clears throat> a raging lunatic is who that is. So then Tanner asked Jeffrey, will he come to the services tomorrow night? And I'm like, Jeffrey, you have got to be literally the dumbest person on earth. <clears throat> he told you that the services are tomorrow night and his man just died. How are y'all planning the services that soon? <laughs> it takes a uh, unless y'all cremating him so Madison asks him what that was about and, and Jeffrey tells him and Madison's like uh, I don't trust that I'm like at least someone has some sense that God gave a mule cause it definitely ain't Jeffrey but let's move on alright you guys we're gonna wrap the episode up so Madison got a phone call up to go and work because I guess some girl called out for the night. So Madison goes to work and he goes into that damn Wyatt's room who is asking for meds. I'm like, Wyatt, you didn't even hurt. I mean, you slit your wrist. Then, um, you know, what's his name? Uncle Vinny slit your wrist. And it didn't even do it. It didn't even make a dent in your. It didn't even do anything to you. You're still alive. Then he says he has. You know, he asked him to remove the restraint so he can go and pee. And Madison's like, your cup is right there. He's like, but I can't grab. He says you got one arm free. Grab it. <clears throat> so then he grabs it, or the Madison got it for him and handed it to him. He says, can you help me with it? And then he starts to flirt with Madison, talking about Madison is cute. And he says, do you think I'm attractive? No, but I think you're a crackhead. <laughs> Trying to get some drugs. So then when Madison turns him down, she calls him an asshole. I'm like, oh, so that's your motive. When people say no to you, you want to call them out their name. Gotcha, Wyatt. So then Benny and Brianna Rihanna, they are out on their date. Well, Brianna Rihanna says it's not a date because she's not interested in Benny because she feels like he's bad news. And then she gives him his paperwork to sign and then she's like, I, you know, I know you just want to have sex with me, so let's get up and go to, back to my place and have sex. But Benny wants to play it off like he doesn't want to have sex with her. And I'm like, oh, okay, Benny. So when she mentions sex to you, now you want to act like you don't want it. Gotcha, buddy. Gotcha. So she tells him that, you know, they can talk, you know, often, but she doesn't want to date him and she's not going to have sex with him. I'm like, way to stand up for yourself, girlfriend. I'm here for you. So while they're on the date, who pulls up but the psycho himself? Sandy. Sandy is so disrespectful. He, he, he keeps referring to Benny as the black. That annoys me. That he, like that annoys me so much calling him the black. Then he called Rihanna, 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 Rihanna a bitch because he said that she killed his son. So then... It was a little bit of a back and forth. I'm going to keep it real with you guys. Because Sandy told Benny to get lost. Then Brianna Rihanna told him to leave. He didn't leave. But then he did eventually get up and popped Sandy with a bottle or something. I don't know what he popped him with. And that's actually where the episode ended, you guys. So, let me know what you guys thought about this episode. Leave your comments in the comment section below. Subscribe to the channel and hit the notification bell button so you guys are aware of when I drop anything else and share this video. Until the next one, you guys, stay safe out there. Take care of yourselves. 
wash your hands, wear your mask or not, whichever one you guys do. Be safe in whatever you do and be blessed, you guys. And until the next one, I'll see you guys later. Bye, guys.